Welcome back to the History of the Papacy podcast in 10 minutes or less. At least we try. Definitely no more than 15 minutes. And thank you for watching and listening. The evening vigil before All Saints Day and All Souls Day is a big deal. The All Hallowtide, a time for remembering those who have passed before us. Or get dressed up, scrounge for candy, decorate pumpkins, eat donuts, drink cider, and maybe play a prank or two around the neighborhood. Maybe this time of mid-fall, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, is the time for all of the above. As with many holidays names in English, the name we use today really obscures the topic or the theme of the holiday. And Halloween is a prime example of this. Halloween is a contraction of All Hallows' Evening. All Hallows' Evening even obscures the meaning of the holiday, too. In the Christian context, at least, Halloween is the vigil or the end-of-day liturgical service before the Feast of All Saints' Day and then the following day of All Souls' Day. We're going to take a quick look at Halloween through the lens of a Christian holiday. How do the traditions of secular Halloween and the All Saints Day Eve and All Souls Day Eve line up? What influence did they have on the development of each other? The purpose of these three days is to commemorate and celebrate the dead. We have to separate that from the celebration of death that's often associated with Halloween. People remember their parents, grandparents, uncles, and aunts, and all of those loved ones who have died. They also celebrate the holy people or the saints of the church. And that's another place where the English language obscures a traditional meaning. Saint just simply means a holy person, but you'll also see hallow or hallowed, which also just means holy. A saint is a person who is holy, someone who's been deemed by the church to essentially be holier than most, or determined to be holy enough uh, in life to be in heaven after their death. Now, where did the celebration of the dead come from? Celebrating and memorializing the dead is as old as humanity and cuts across all cultures, so that doesn't really help us. In the Christian context, in the very first few centuries of Christianity, there were several individual days to celebrate the dead. So let's talk about what celebrating the dead looks like in Christianity. And that gets us back to the evening of the day before the feast. All of these things, feast, evening song, vigil, vespers, they're all tied to liturgical practices. On the night before All Saints' Feast, a vesper service is done, and that's on October 31st. The usual other liturgical hours are done, and then a special liturgy or mass is done on the actual All Saints' Day, November 1st. Then the cycle runs through again on All Souls Day, November 2nd. This is all in context of church liturgical celebration. Today, running through the entire schedule of services is not common at most parishes, and it's more likely to be done in a monastery, and even if it's done there either, in the past, more people would have celebrated this whole process, though. Let's go back, far back to even before the Middle Ages. Several days were used throughout the year to celebrate the dead, and they were generally around the Lenten time. There were seven official days. Souls days, all souls days during the year, were usually celebrated on Saturdays, the day Jesus spent in the tomb after the crucifixion. Saturday cele celebration symbolized the dead person still being in the tomb before the resurrection. Each saint has a dedicated day to be remembered. Now, the main or most important day to celebrate All Saints Day 
uh, in this pre-Middle Ages time in the Catholic Church was the first Sunday after Pentecost, which is a movable holiday celebrated 50 days after Easter. And it can be either in May or June. And as a matter of fact, the Eastern Orthodox Christians and Eastern Christians in general still celebrate the dead under this schedule. There's a variety of liturgical services and traditions surrounding the commemoration of the dead, eating special foods, blessing of graves, and it's really a connection between the spiritual uh, and the grave in their earthly body. The Latin Church of Western Europe commemorated the dead in a similar way up until the early Middle Ages, Dark Ages, and certain influences of local groups and local traditions in the West kind of changed this, starting in around the time 609, uh, when the Pantheon in Rome was turned into the Church of St. Mary and all the martyrs by Pope Boniface IV. Martyrs, being holy people, they got an entire church and day dedicated to them. I know what you're going to say, and you'll guess that day as May 13th, now, we're not at May, October 31st and November 1st yet, but we, so we have to dig a little bit deeper. About a hundred odd years later in the 730s, Pope Gregory III dedicated a chapel in St. Peter's to all the saints on November 1st. And he changed the date of All Saints Day to November 1st. Other dates were still used, but this November 1st day was actually locked in by Gregory IV in 844. And this may have been pushed by some German Frankish church officials who were in turn pushed by some Irish clerics in their ranks. And this is when the Irish finally come in. This is where we get into all these theories of why the above dates have been made All Saints and All Souls Day. Most of the theories on why Christian holidays are on certain dates in, is all in the name of syncretism, Christians gobbling up pagan customs and holidays for its own use. Halloween, Christmas, Easter have all have their theories on why they uh, are set on certain days. Christmas and Easter will have to wait, but let's talk about Halloween and how this first May 13th date was supposed to be syncretized. It was actually, the theory is that it was meant to line up with a Roman holiday of spirits and the dead. Then we get into the revised November 1st Halloween date, and that's said to have come from Irish pagan holidays, namely the Samhain holiday. Now Samhain, an Irish festival, fall harvest festival, was celebrated in the neighborhood of the end of October through early November. Many of our favorite Halloween traditions, such as trick-or-treating, guising, or wearing costumes, jack-o'-lanterns, etc., can in some way be described back to the Samhain, or if at least not directly Samhain, to Irish Celtic pagan customs. There are always several problems linking Christian holidays and dating to the pagan holidays in general, and then Samhain in particular, and we always look at dates. Roman and pagan holidays often didn't have fixed dates. Roman and pagan holidays could have differences in their dating from days to even weeks. Then we have evidence. We have very little evidence of what people actually did on Samhain. And some of the things that we would connect to Halloween and to that celebration are actually from neo-pagan movements that didn't really pop up until the, 7th, the 18th and the 19th centuries. Now, November 1st is All Saints Day and November 2nd is All Souls Days. Could be a conspiracy to suppress Samhain. But there is really no direct evidence or even a ton of circumstantial evidence to prove that. The circumstantial case is that Alcuin, an Irish monk who worked for the Franks, pushed the Pope in Rome to change the date of all saints to a day to cover up Samhain. It seems like a huge stretch to me to think that an Irish monk born 
and who worked for the Franks during a tremendously unsettled time, got a feast day changed in far off Rome simply to suppress a pagan holiday back in Ireland that was kind of going out of fashion long before he was even born. And why would people in Rome City care about an Irish pagan holiday so much to change their day that they used, traditionally had used to celebrate the dead to just make sure that they didn't uh, have to deal with an Irish holiday. Were Roman popes so concerned with a regional holiday in Ireland that they changed the entire celebration day of a major holiday in central Italy just to cover up Samhain? Alternatively, we have to believe that somehow the Irish monk Alcuin somehow affected the changing of All Souls Day and All Saints Day before he was born and locking in the November 1st date long after he was dead. This Alcuin was so tricky, he didn't even use October 31st. He tricked everyone and made it the next day in the calendar. It's much more likely that there were many dates people honored their dead and remembered, and honoring de the dead is a tradition most cultures celebrate. Halloween, as it's celebrated in North America, is definitely a syncretization itself. Irish, Scottish, English, and other elements are combined. New syncretizations, such as Dia de los Muertos elements, a predominantly Mexican celebration of All Souls Day was has been syncretized into many, many holiday, Halloween celebrations and traditions. The Mexican celebration of Dia de los, de los Muertos itself is a syncretization of native Mesoamerican religious beliefs with Catholic Christian All Souls Day celebration. So the circles just keep coming back around. Maybe the lesson here is that people adapt and refine cultural elements to fit into pre-existing traditions. There's no copycatting, and that history is much more complicated than just playing gotcha. So there you go. Enjoy Halloween if you want. Celebrate All Saints and All Souls Day the next day, or wait a few months and celebrate All Souls Day seven times. Maybe wait six months and celebrate All Saints Day again in the old-fashioned way they used to do it. Then again, you could try and reintroduce Halloween, Halloween in May. That would be a much better time to trick-or-treat, in my opinion. So many options, so many things to change. Thank you to all our patrons on Patreon. Join us there to support the show. Make sure to click like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get more videos like this, and I will see you next time.